This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Opinions expressed are those of the show's hosts, not WPSL or Port St. Lucie broadcasters. Any reproduction or reuse of this program without the written consent of WPSL is strictly prohibited. Time now for Treasure Coast Justice with Donna DeMarchi and Taylor Hoskins. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Great to be back, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how is your summer going? As we all know, it's quite toasty, so it's been warm, but I don't think I shared last time. I just recently went on a great Alaskan cruise, and I highly recommend anyone that hasn't done that. I mean, it was just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, and we see crazy things like ice and water, something we don't have here in Florida. A lot of whales. We've got a lot of ice, but it's usually in drinks. Correct. (laughs) Which there's something good to be said for that as well. Um, but but that's been my exciting adventure for the summer. The scenery up there is just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got to take Carol up there. Yes, and it's it's phenomenal. So today, we we kind of teased this a little bit last week uh, for our listeners, but we're going to focus a little bit more on what's commonly known as a slip and fall, trip and fall, step and fall. Something happens and down we go. And kind of some of the types of cases that Taylor and I have seen throughout the years and some of the things that if you are a business owner, you can do to try to protect yourself should someone um, have an incident on your property and some steps you should take to document, you know, what happened, how it happened um, again, so that your insurance carrier will be happy when you give them the call and let them know what happened, that you've properly documented the incident. Because I know we probably have a lot of business owners that are listening in, homeowners, property owners um, that might want some tips and things that they can do to protect themselves. You bet. Yeah. So, uh, you know, me and my friend Google, We've talked about my friend Google. <laughs> yes. So I did do just a little because I know uh, some folks like statistics. So 15% of all accidental deaths in the U.S. recur as a result of a fall, which is interesting. It was higher than I wow. expected. Yeah. And that's from OSHA. So that's real. Um, I also was interested, you know, we have a senior population here on the Treasure Coast. Uh, and even though they say, you know, I just turned 50. You're looking at me when you say that. I understand Well, I just turned 50 and allegedly 50 is the new 40. You know, know. I'm old enough to be your father, so that's okay. (laughs) (laughs) We try to drop ourselves by decades, but, you know, the reality is, especially those of us that have aging parents um, or friends and family in the senior population, those aged between 65 and 84, falling is the second leading cause of injury death. I'm not surprised. And then 85 and up is the number one cause. And you hear all the time when somebody falls, they fracture their hip, that that tends to be the decline. So things that we can do to protect ourselves also so that we are more aware, aware of our surroundings, and make sure that we don't put ourselves in a position or our family members in a position where this could possibly happen to them. So let's talk about slip and falls. <laughs> okay. You know, the, the, one of the misconceptions is that just because you fall at a business or on someone else's property, if you're hurt, they will pay for it. But that's not always true. You know, they have to have done something wrong. The big word that we use in the law is negligence. And so I took the liberty of pulling up the jury instructions. So if you're sitting on a jury, you're going to hear this. And it doesn't help us a lot. But what it says is negligence is the failure to use reasonable care, which is the care that a reasonably careful person would not do under like circumstances. Negligence is doing something that a reasonably careful person would not do under like circumstances or failing to do something that a reasonably careful person would do under like circumstances. So that's clear as mud. Which tends to happen say, in the I'm law. Totally confused. Whole lot of words that that don't have a whole lot of definition, unfortunately. But you hear the word reasonable a lot, a lot, and that's what the jury's told, and they're supposed to somehow decipher whether a property owner or landowner did something wrong, or didn't, or failed to do something they should have done to keep the property safe. So it, it's hard to really give concrete. So the best thing that Taylor and I can do is give you just some examples. 
you know, of cases we've seen, issues we've seen, um, and what the property owner probably could have done to avoid the incident. And we've seen it all, and we've heard it all, trust me, <laughs> through the years. Most common, you walk into Publix, you walk into Walmart, or any other business, it's typically a store, and you slip on water. Okay, so that's our magic substance. We know what our substance is, there's water. I now, as the plaintiff's attorney, have to prove that the store management knew or should have known that that water was there. Well, if it's raining and we know people are tracking in water, sure. right? We can take measures, we can put the wet floor sign out and that's typically enough to protect you from liability. I have warned you that the floors are wet. You now have to be more careful yourself, right? But sometimes I don't know where that water came from and I use extreme examples because it helps. But a lot of times we see moms with strollers and there's the baby with their sippy cup and they're flailing it all over the place. There might be water going on the floor. If I come up right behind them, slip in that trail of water, well now the, the business owner may not be responsible because did they know this was happening? Were they following every customer? Was it reasonable you know, for them? So I have to prove and this is almost impossible. My client has the responsibility of proving how long that water was on that floor. And those are harder cases. Because how do they know? I think that's impossible. Right. Yeah, a tip for that, if you are involved in a slip and fall type accident, is to try to figure out, number one, what caused you to fall and where that substance came from. Or if it's not a substance, if it's slick tile, a stair, try to figure out exactly what made you fall so that we can go back as attorneys and try to investigate the cause because without the cause it's really hard to pursue a claim you see a lot in in grocery stores like in the produce department where they put down um, a carpet or something right by the produce area where the you know they water the produce during the day so yeah see that i had a super fun case against a local business um with that produce well you know they have the showers mm -hmm. that come yeah. and sometimes they play raindrops are falling on my head what yeah. have you <laughs> and the they tried to say oh no we we kept it dry it was always dry i found a former employee those are sometimes our best evidence who came in and said oh yeah we call that the wet wall because it's always wet very helpful for my client of course um, but you know so what is it reasonable do they have to have those sprinklers or is it kind of for show you know they have the thunderstorm sounds mm -hmm. or whatever oh yeah yeah so so it all becomes down to what's reasonable yet we as consumers we know that's there we listen to the raindrops are falling on my head so i also have a duty to watch out for myself you know i know it's wet so that it can go both ways At almost every i think taylor would agree with me over almost every one of these slip and fall trip fall case they put some liability on the person right the um the thing is that what the jury thinks is that the person walking has a duty to kind of pay attention to where you're walking where in reality you're looking straight ahead or if you're shopping you're looking for what you're looking for and not down at the floor to make sure there's nothing in your way that could cause you to fall but that's that's always something that the jury will put on the plaintiff in a slip and fall case so how do those cases normally work out normally in favor of the business every case is different yeah okay yeah <laughs> um it depends all the facts are different it depends if the business owner really did something very negligent then there's going to be um more on the business owner to keep their premises in a reasonably safe condition where if it's more on the person say they were drunk or whatever you know then then it goes more towards the person not the business owner so every case is different and every situation is different yeah i know a uh, uh, fellow who owns a garage and you know of course there's maybe oil on the floor or something like that and he's got signs everywhere you know first of all you're not allowed in the garage area and stuff like that but beware of slippery floors i mean he's he's got them everywhere yeah yeah a big part of these cases or what we'll try to allege is a failure to warn you as a premises owner know you've got oil in your garage or what have you and if you fail to warn me even if you think it's obvious you know i should know as a consumer that there's potentially oil at a garage but putting that sign up is a great way to protect them should the lawyer come knocking down the road because i we knew about it 
So that's easy to prove. They know. Whether they knew or should have known, that's easy in that type of a factual right, situation. Right. But we also warned people, and they they assumed that, that risk. You hear assumption of the risk is one of our legalese type terms, but they assumed the risk. They they knew about it, and they chose to walk in there, so it's not my problem. And that, that happens quite a bit. You know, so slip and fall on a stuff is very, very common, but we've seen a lot of others. So we'll go ahead and, and maybe we can tag team a little bit, go through some examples. Sure. Um, some of the new ones, we actually have a couple of these pending in the office, um, are failure to maintain the parking lot. So the asphalt becomes very potholed, pitted, what yep. have you. Yeah. And folks, you know, just like Taylor mentioned earlier, we're not staring at the ground as we walk. We trust that the surface is going to stay beneath our feet uh, and not fall away. And and we see that a lot. And then those become a little challenging because whose responsibility is the parking lot? If it's a commercial property and they have multiple tenants, what liability does a tenant possibly bear? What liability does a homeowner bear? I've got to look at contracts and leases and really figure out who was responsible. Have they had it resurfaced recently? Who did that? So there's possibly a lot of parties involved in those parking lot accidents. One that I'm not a fan of and pretty rare that that attorneys will take them are the parking bumper. So people will trip over the parking bumper. We all know they're there I've done again. That. <laughs> yeah. I've done that. Yeah. And it's open and obvious and it's common and so did the property owner do anything wrong by putting those parking bumpers up? No. So it's really those are very, very challenging claims to make unless somehow the bumpers were in disrepair or there's rebar sticking out of them, something that's not normal or common or reasonable, you know, like the the words like to use. If you have like a center, shopping center, now I wouldn't think that the tenants would be liable. Wouldn't the person who actually, the landowner who owns that center, wouldn't they be the ones that are liable? I would say 99% of the time, there are some times where they may have, for whatever reason, put in their lease because the property owner or the landowner is out of state and we're going to lease you this property, but you have to take care of everything. So that's why we have to look at the contract or have some type of indemnification. If something happens, it's on you. And so it's really, really important if you're starting a business, especially if you don't, if you're brand new to the business world, that you really read those lease or even better have it reviewed by an attorney so that they can advise you what you're accepting as far as responsibility and liability from everything from care and maintenance to the air conditioners. That's a big one in leases. You know, who's going to be responsible for that? Because it's a big expense. And a lot of time the landlords will put that on the tenant. You know, that AC is 20, 25 years old. You don't know what you're getting into. Triple net lease or whatever that is. (laughs) Yeah, right, right, right. So that's, you know, uh, attorneys are typically not very popular, but that's one situation that you really should have an experienced real estate attorney review your lease before you get yourself into something uh, that you didn't anticipate. And I think, too, if you're leasing a property and you notice there's something going on in the parking lot, whether it's a pothole that keeps getting bigger or... Maybe the paint is slippery if they painted different spots or a handicap oh, sure. spot. Yeah. I think as um, someone who's leasing a property, you have a duty to let the landlord know. And I think that would, if you do everything you can in your power to avoid something happening in the future, I think that's better for you. But if you notice something that's happening in your own parking lot um, that you go to every day, that you have customers go to every day, I think you have a duty to let your landlord know if there is a defect that needs to be fixed. So is like an email trail enough? Yeah. For that? Yeah, document, document, document. You'll hear all the time, well, I called. Well, okay, did you record? Because you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> you know, you know, but what did you do? So documenting in every situation, obviously, is really, really important. Wow. If you, if you own a business, give us a bus. <laughs> this is really interesting. Uh, 340-1590. And uh, talk to Donna and Taylor of Hoskins, Turco, Lloyd & Lloyd. We will be back. A level playing field is important in any athletic game. If you've been injured in any type of accident, you will quickly find yourself fighting an uphill battle. 
I'm injury attorney Taylor Hoskins from Hoskins Turco Lloyd and Lloyd, and I'm a 2008 graduate of Lincoln Park Academy. At Hoskins Turco, our injury team has leveled the playing field for thousands of Treasure Coast injury victims since 1980. For a free case review at any of our local Treasure Coast offices, call Hoskins Turco Lloyd and Lloyd today at 464-4600. With offices in Port St. Lucie. Having the home field is considered an advantage in football. I'm injury attorney Donna DeMarchi from Hoskins Turco Lloyd and Lloyd, and I'm a graduate of Martin County High School. Our firm is a strong supporter of the home teams of the Treasure Coast. If you've had the misfortune of being injured in any type of accident, please remember that our firm has four local offices. Our hometown injury team is ready to work for you. So call us today, Hoskins Turco Lloyd and Lloyd, at 464-4600 for a free case review. With offices in Port St. Lucie. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. It's 1121 at WPSL 1590, the talk of the Treasure Coast. WPSL.com, webcaster to the world on Alexa and Google Home. And... Uh, we're slipping and falling around here today with Donna and Taylor. You know, we mentioned the ice earlier. That's one thing we don't have to worry about around here is slipping oh. and falling on ice. I can't Snow. imagine what yeah. that, that that creates. You know, one of the things I didn't do at the top of the hour, and, and shame on me, is talk a little bit about our firm. So you can hear the ads throughout our radio show, but... Between Mr. Hoskins and I, we probably have 55 to 60 years experience litigating these slip and fall, trip and fall cases. And of course, we can add Taylor's experience on top of that. And you said earlier, kind of how do people perceive or, or think of these cases and, and juries in general, it's very cyclical. You know how the the jury process is phenomenal. We have the best justice system on the planet here in the United States. But the way people will perceive or think of these things is part of what makes that documentation so important. We do put more responsibility on people now than we do the business owners. It's definitely been a shift in that, you know, a lot of the taking care of ourselves and, and paying attention ourselves and not necessarily wanting to put the fault on the business owner or the property owner unless it's obvious. So that's created some challenges when it comes to trying to prosecute these cases and take them all the way through the jury trial and so you know now that you've slipped and fell, fallen on your water or whatever it is in a store the first thing coming to your mind isn't I need to take a photo or I need to figure out where the water is coming from but it really really is so important and needs to be because we love our stores we love our Publix we love our Walgreens you know we love our CVS we all and when we have to sue them I have to deal with that perception with the jurors. You know, their, their store is great. Everything's always perfect. You know, it must have been the person somehow. So it does make it difficult and challenging. But like we talked about documenting for your landlord or what have you, issues that you notice, it's also so important if you're involved in an incident. I realize you're probably hurt and sore, but if there's a family member there or somebody, take the photos. Yes, will they try to say, oh, obviously you were thinking about suing? Well, sure, but you were also protecting yourself or your family member down the road. It's not that you were thinking about suing. You were just documenting an incident. Because I promise you when I ask for the video, they don't have it. No. Oh, no. I <laughs> never. I, that's funny. I never would think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it shouldn't have to be your first thought. Yeah, that, but, very true. But very the, true. the laws do not protect the injured. They really protect the, the businesses. Justifiably, I understand that. Um, the other thing that property owners need to remember to do is, is check their insurance on an annual mm -hmm. basis and make sure they're covering whatever risks might come their way. You know, if their business is growing, then they probably want to increase their limits because they've got more feet coming through the door. Um, have they changed the layout of their store? Have they changed the properties that they're or the products that they're carrying? What changes have they made? And it's so important. And I probably have said on one of our previous shows, if your insurance agent is a screen, you're doing yourself a disservice. You need to go in and talk to somebody. Here's the type of business I have. Here's the type of foot traffic I have. What do I need to ensure that I'm adequately protected? We need a human? Yes. Is that I know. what you're actually saying? Crazy <laughs> to think. But, you know, I was so grateful that we had Tammy on a couple weeks ago to talk a little bit about the homeowners and the hurricanes issues. And, and it, you know, that's probably when I brought it up, how important it is to have a person that gets to know you, your business, your family, all those types of things. Because insurance is really what we have 
to protect our stuff, you know, from somebody suing us and getting it. There's a type of coverage that you can purchase as a business owner or premises owner, as well as a homeowner. Um, it's called medical payments. And I've seen policies with 500 up to 20,000. And with medical payment type insurance, you don't have to prove the business owner or premises owner was liable or negligent in any way. If you fall and get injured or if you get injured in any way on a property and they have medical payments, they should pay you whatever those limits are if your medical treatment and damages reach that. Typically the way it works, you have to submit your bill. So if you ended up going to the hospital, you can just give your bill to the property owner and they should pay it. So that's always something to look out for too and it's important to have on your own policy. Okay, so any customer could get this on their which policy? Homeowners or You can get it on. You can get it on whatever. a homeowner's policy. Sure. Um auto? But yeah. For you to, it's not something that protects you personally. So if, since I own a home, I have a homeowner's policy and my homeowner's has probably a thousand or 5,000 in med pay. So if my friend comes over and gets injured on my property in some way and she ends up getting medical treatment for it, if she submits those bills to the insurance company, my medical payment should cover that. So most business owners around here, like the Walmarts don't have it. I'm not sure if Publix does, I don't think they do. Um, but some of the commercial, like I know some uh, leasing companies will have it or like a, a, I know a parking lot company here has it. So you just have to look for those little little med pay coverages on, on insurance policies. So this is something a business right. should have with whoever writes their business insurance as well. Right. Right. Wow. I'll we'll have to check with our insurance agent on that. <laughs> well, Carol, well, I, hmm. yeah, that's that's interesting. I didn't even know that existed. Okay. So not only the slip and falls, I have recently had a a lot of folks stepping off uneven curbs. So the yellow marks, when you go to a a business or a plaza and you see the yellow line, I always joke, stinking lawyers, you know, but it, it, there, we have so many uneven surfaces in Florida, especially, and we'll have wheelchair ramps and all these other types of things. And I've had some cases where a a client stepped off a curb and they didn't anticipate it to be as large as it was. And in my best case scenario, it violates a code because if they're violating a code, that makes it easy to prove that negligence or liability because they're not even within code. But it's also important as, as people, we really have to watch when we step. Sometimes those curbs that look like they're two or three inches could be six or seven inches just because of the sloping of the ground, um, how our, our ground erodes here in Florida. You know, we have a lot of shifting sands going on underneath the pavements. So it's also very important as a business owner that you're keeping an eye on that. I was somewhere not too long ago where it had shifted so much, you know, the sidewalks will shift, what have you, that there was about a two or three inch gap where there used to be, it used to be level. So we have to keep an eye on that. We do have a responsibility as a property owner, especially if we're going to have folks come into our, our premises, whether it be a business or a home that we are doing reasonable inspections. There's that reasonable word again, Mm -hmm. but you know, reasonably inspecting our property to look for these hazards so that we can caution people if they exist. Yeah, well, you see that a lot on uh, city sidewalks. Mm -hmm. It's all of a sudden (laughs) the sidewalks take take a little dip there. Right. Well, hey, we will be back in uh, just three minutes. We're taking a break for Florida News Network. You're on Treasure Coast Justice with Taylor and Donna DeMarchi. We'll be back. We're back on Treasure Coast Justice with Taylor Hoskins and Donna DeMarchi. Slipping and falling around the studio. Well, not exactly. That's the topic today. You know, I want to go ahead and, and touch on some of the types of injuries that we see as a result of these. The most obvious and easy is the broken bone. Okay, so, you know, if you fall and you break a bone, everyone knows that. But when it's so, so important if you're involved in a fall, especially depending on age, like we mentioned earlier, that you really get thoroughly checked out. Okay, so, you know, if you have a headache and you think, oh, it'll go away or my neck's a little sore, I'm going to focus on my broken leg. But make sure you get all your injuries checked out 
because gravity is not your friend. Um, and I often see where these types of cases will develop into much more significant and worse injuries that maybe they didn't get fully evaluated or vetted and now I'm gonna have a harder time pointing the finger back at the fall or that incident that occurred. Always, always, if you're having any pain, get checked out. You know, and the other thing that I see a lot with slip and fall, trip and falls, it's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. You know, they oh yeah, yeah. They usually happen at the entrance of the store or, or one of the main aisles, and people are looking at you. So our inclination is to kind of brush ourselves off and leave, and that can make it very difficult for me because, like I mentioned earlier, that video is now gone. Okay, there's conveniently no video and I again I have to prove that you slipped in their store on something that shouldn't have been there or tripped them on something that shouldn't have been there so again don't follow that first instinct you know make sure you report it to someone what happened and that serves two purposes one it lets management know so they can hopefully clean it up and it doesn't happen to someone else um, and obviously it further documents that the incident occurred when it occurred where it occurred where it occurred in the store so that you're not leaving yourself open to attacks on your credibility or even attacks on where or when it happened at the facility okay it looks like uh, we have a call on line one it's uh, Susie in uh, Fort Pierce. Uh, you're on with Taylor and Donna. Yeah, my question is, has a parking lot that has a tree where the roots have traveled and uprooted the asphalt, and people have tripped and fell, um, and one even broke a leg. Could you uh, discuss that? Wow. <laughs> That's interesting. You know, I had, it wasn't in a commercial property, but I had a very, very similar case in a residential condominium property where the trees' roots had torn up the, the pavement. And what I was able to show was that management was certainly aware just by having photographs that showed this didn't happen today. You know, roots don't come up through a sidewalk or, or asphalt in a day. So if you can show that that property owner failed to properly maintain the premises, has al allowed those trip hazards to develop, um, it was somewhat comical after I made my claim, they went through and painted all of those root cracks like a bright fluorescent green. It's like, no, fix it, don't just paint it. But ma'am, you may very well potentially have a claim. It might be something that you want to explore further because I have seen them and I've had, I have seen them be successful. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, that's something I never thought of. And she's off the line, I guess. But, um, yeah, I, I've seen that in, in parking lots before. You know, obviously trees get bigger. And, yeah, mm -hmm. that's interesting. And one of the things um, the insurance companies will look at, too, is if there's a tree or something in a parking lot or, or really anywhere. If you, as, I don't know, a customer knew that it was there and say you parked in the same parking lot every day for 10 years and you knew that the roots were there yes. then it's harder to pursue that claim rather than just this being your first time there and, and tripping and falling so that's always something to consider wow okay that's interesting well now okay as a customer and say you've seen this for maybe a year or two should you document that and maybe take it into the store and say look what you've got outside or so that's an, another one that i've had be a bit of a catch-22 as well so i had a it was a property where the it was in a homeowners association and the homeowners association accepted the responsibility for maintaining the yards and the the driveways and that type of thing uh, and the um my tenant so she was a renter, had reported to the property management company numerous times problems in the driveway, problems in the driveway, has another problem in the driveway, ends up falling. It wasn't in the same area where she had reported. So I used that to help me. Well, it was the same problem, just in a different area, these pavers. Again, we are moving sands here in Florida, so the pavers had actually adjusted. And, um, but it was in a different area of the parking lot, so I was able to use that. But they will use that against you because that just, again, shows that you knew 
you know, you knew there was a problem, but it doesn't, that doesn't completely eliminate the responsibility of the property owner. They still share some responsibility to make sure they're keeping the premises safe. And in Florida, we're a comparative fault state. So a jury could say, well, property owner, you're 50% at fault because you didn't fix it after they told you. And, and person that fell, you're 50% at fault because you knew about it and should have paid better attention. Okay, Paul is uh, on the line uh, with us, and uh, Paul, you're on with uh, Donna and Taylor. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Two-part question. One is uh, on liability. The second one is a number to reach either you or Taylor after, you know, the show or some time. Okay, what's the what's the first part of the question? First one is uh, liability. I don't know what I bought that had it clear, so it just can Your phone is breaking up pretty badly. Uh, okay, let me move. <laughs> I know you gotta go. You gotta go outside with these phones. Don't trip. Uh, oh. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> and I'm up in that age bracket too. <laughs> But, uh, no, I own the lot next door to me. I've had it cleared and everything, so it's vacant. It's, you know, no, not any tree stumps or anything. I uh, checked with my insurance company itself, and they said that you can add that to your existing policy. And then I checked with the agent, and they say, no, you need a separate policy for that. Do you know anything in relation to that? Is it covered under your they're not adjoining. They're not connected. They are kept as separate lots. So do you need a separate policy for that lot? And to be perfectly honest, I, I don't know the answer to that. I think it just depends on the insurance company and their underwriting, whether they would tack it on to your other homeowner's policy or not. I, I would guess that different insurance companies would handle that differently. I'm more surprised that your agent disputed what the carrier told you that surprises me a little <laughs> you, bit you would think the carrier would know more possibly but you never know because there, uh, there, there there's hundreds hundreds literally of insurance yeah, companies yeah. out there now not a lot that are right in florida anymore thank you to our friends francis and gene and, and you can't blame them um, but that what is my liability with that uh do i have to post it you know no trespassing or anything like that or so you know, you know vacant Right. Vacant land is interesting. So it's whether, you know, do you have an attractive nuisance on the property? Do you have a swing that people might go on there? I don't think it hurts, sir, as long as you're not in an HOA that disallows it to put a no trespassing sign. It's like the sign. wet floor sign type of thing. It would be, you know, you, you just cover your bases, I guess. Absolutely. And I don't know, you know, I know on my street, we have a vacant lot that the woman next door owns and she always has signs mm -hmm. out there because we're on a canal. And so that's kind of an attractive nuisance. Oh, Kids okay. might go yeah, back there yeah, to yeah. fish or what have you. There really shouldn't be anybody traversing across your land, but it doesn't hurt to put a no trespassing sign know. out there. Sure. Today, today they come and walk right through your house. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> And the second one is a number to reach either you or Donna. I have another uh, case that we're trying to pursue, and I would like to get some information on that. Sure. So our office number is 772-464-4600. And we have offices in Port St. Lucie, Fort Pierce, Vero okay. Beach, and Okeechobee, if one of those is closer yeah. for you. I'm in Port St. Lucie. Do you ask for you specifically, if you want to? If you call in, there's a good chance you'll get Taylor, to be honest, because she right. fields a lot okay. of our incoming okay. calls. But this is Donna, and I'm actually housed typically in the Port St. Lucie office. So while you might speak to Taylor, you might get to meet me. So you might get both of us. Oh, okay. There again, come in and explain what the situation is and see where we go from there. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, just give us a call. Okay. Got it all well documented, too. <laughs> So, uh, thank you very much. Okay, we'll be giving you a call. Thanks for the information. All right, thank you very much for the call, Paul. And uh, yeah, some good information. That that's that's something I've never heard. Where the insurance agent 
was disputing what his company was saying. Yeah, I, I think That's I'd go with the carrier, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and might be considering a new agent. Yeah. That's a whole other. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes, exactly. Um, so one of the things that I see a lot, you know, we'll touch on the insurance stuff a little bit, is really look at who you're doing your business with, of course, in any situation. But there's insurance brokers which are different than insurance agents. So a lot of time an agent is captive to a certain company. So they might be an Allstate agent, a State Farm agent, and I'm not trying to pick on our agents, but they are doing business and paid for by a certain company, whereas the brokers can shop several different companies. So they can look at more options typically for you. They can tailor your policy a little better for your specific and unique circumstances because none of us are cookie cutter. We're not all the same. We don't all have the same potential liabilities um, or the same assets that we're trying to protect. So I've always been a big fan. And again, this is truly my personal opinion, not even that of the firm, to be fair to Hoskins, Sterkel, Lloyd and Lloyd, uh, but that the brokers are, are a better way to go just because they have more resources available and can find that company that will cover your home and your lot under the same policy. Um, and can also help you price, you know, progressive tells Flo tells us she'll give us all the prices. Uh, but I do think the, the brokers, again, have access to more resources. So that's been my personal preference as far as when I'm looking at insurance. But I will shop different brokers because they work for different carriers. And and few of my ladies in town know that I'm going to go ask the others. So make sure you're <laughs> giving me the best deal and you're getting me, you know, the best options because I do shop around and I do that on an annual basis. People are afraid to leave their insurance company. I see that a lot. But the reality is... Guilty is charged. Yeah, whoever. Yeah. Or, or they'll say, yeah. X, Y, and Z has been great to me through the years. And I'll ask, well, have you ever had a claim? No. So they've been great at taking your money every month. That's good to know. But what have they done for you lately? You know, um, And I'm always happy to, and, and for any of your listeners that just want my thoughts, again, purely my opinion on different carriers and, and what I've seen in my 20 years of doing this work, how they handle and process claims. There are some that are better than others. I'm not going to do that on the radio, but they're more than welcome to call me. Again, our number is 772-464-4600. It's free. Uh, There's few times that lawyers are free. I'm happy to to give them my thoughts on various carriers. And also, if they want to just know what their coverage means, if they don't feel their agent's giving them the right answers, especially their auto policies. I'm happy to go through and explain to them what they have. I'd rather them come to me with that before they get involved in an accident so we can help make sure that they're adequately covered uh, should unfortunately an accident occur. Okay, so chapter one, if if you're buying a business, video. Should you video like the parking lot and and everything that you have, I mean, like here we have <laughs> six acres of, of, you know, there's nothing on it except towers. So here's what happens with the videos. Obviously, it's expensive. And a lot of property owners or premises owners, especially businesses, have the video, though, not so much for the slip, fall, trip, fall scenario, but for the the shoplifter break in so for that purpose even more so for security purposes oh that's a whole nother world negligent mm-hmm. security if, if you don't have that video and you're a video and you're in a high crime area i can come after you for that because you haven't been reasonable in protecting your customers right so video i think serves multiple purposes what we typically find that when we ask for said video is a lot of times the premises will tell us they don't record or they don't record and retain they record over every 24 hours or whatever we've heard it all if the video is harmful for my client they magically have them if it's helpful for my client (laughs) oh we re-record every 24 hours or it was destroyed or you know there's things i can do when that type of thing happens but i do think cameras one they've become a lot more affordable you know just to have out there but i my personal opinion again is more for security versus documenting the injury but you also might want it for that because there's some great videos on youtube Mm -hmm. if you want to google fake slip and fall <laughs> trip and fall claims oh, no. um, they even have that oh yeah there's oh, a really God. good one i showed at a conference we had not too long ago it was a work comp claim where the guy was in his cafeteria took some ice out of the ice maker tossed it on the floor proceeded to do a very theatric well done flop and tried to make a work claim 
more comp claim out of it and it's current it's very it's within the last year i think yeah yeah and it, it's it's sad and amusing all at the same time but it does happen so you know thank goodness that business had those cameras there in the cafeteria and caught this guy putting on this scam uh, trying to get money for it. it it happens i don't think it happens as often as we want to think but there are some videos out there certainly on youtube should businesses have videos inside and out now sure i i think so i mean again granted i'm a very tainted plaintiff personal injury lawyer that wants that video it doesn't mean you have to record and retain them all the time but uh, more so again for the security but i also to protect you should someone try to claim they fell or, or slipped on your property because at least you've got that evidence could it harm you yes but you've got something you know mm -hmm. you've got something and they've made a lot of advances in technology too to have video surveillance is a lot cheaper than it used to be so it's really inexpensive now for businesses to to have that and so when you weigh that compared to having you know a fake slip and fall or something like a criminal act or something happened on your premises to the cost of having a very inexpensive video surveillance system it the need kind of outweighs the the cost so that's okay well that's kind of the basic of uh for uh, businesses now i would i would think even at our homes you know my neighbor's garage got broken into not too long ago he had left it open admittedly he was a couple houses away working on a boat so he was close but he wasn't right there and someone on a bicycle took a couple of his fishing poles i mean they didn't take a lot but it was enough and police law enforcement came over and asked me if i had one of those ring doorbells and i didn't at the time but i've got one ready to install as soon as we're my, looking at that my yeah, dear spouse yeah. puts it in but law enforcement it's such a useful tool for them now because they would have seen whomever it was riding by my my front door had i had one but a lot of folks do and it amazes me when you see the people that are stealing packages now off front porches and things. It's like, come yeah. on, most of us have <laughs> something, you know, and they don't think they're going to get caught. It's just incredible. I have two Nest cameras, and one shows the front of my house, and one shows the side. And someone ran over my mailbox a couple months ago, so I could go back through and figure out who it was. And it happened to be a dump truck that they were doing construction with down the road. But I use it all the time to see when packages were delivered or who goes by my house. Now, can you uh, monitor that on your phone? I do. Okay. I yeah. do. So it's super easy and they'll let me save clips of it so I can, I saved the clip of the guy hitting my mailbox and I sent it to my mom for her to look at because she was super invested in who hit my mailbox. So it's pretty cool. So you can tell which one of us is the younger and which one of us is more <laughs> senior. But I'm going to get one. I'm going to get one. Our chief engineer has got that in, in his house. And actually, he had some packages stolen off mm -hmm. and went right to it. Well, I used it the other day. I started doing, um, like, where they deliver my meals. I ordered six meals and they delivered it. And I didn't know exactly when they delivered it. My food wasn't that cold anymore. So I went back to see when they delivered it and found out it was the same day and the food was fine. So I use it for a bunch of different things. All right. This gets into a whole different thing. <laughs> She's ordering food now. Is this, <laughs> is hey, this we're not like, falling anymore. Now we're eating. Is this like Uber Eats or something like that? <laughs> well, no, it's like it's um, Freshly, I think, is the company and they'll make pre-made meals. Yeah. And it's so easy. So when I'm done working all day, I don't have to come home and cook a meal. I just <laughs> pop it in the microwave and I'm good to go. Okay. What about liability on that with the Florida heat? <clears throat> That's why I have my camera, so I can see when it was delivered. <laughs> okay. But, well, the, you know, the, since we got to food, it's another case that often comes up against businesses. Is And we get calls all the time, people that have bitten into something in their meal that shouldn't have been there. Now, the hair and the food in the restaurant, no. The, you know, there's not going to really be any liability for that. It, it happens. It's unfortunate. It's disgusting. Um, but unless you um, get some type of a disease or illness as a result, there's really not going to be much to that. It's a little frightening with the hepatitis A that we've had going on around here on the Treasure Coast because that can often be transmitted, um, but they haven't linked any, just to be fair, to any of the local restaurants or anything. Our restaurants, I think, do a good job of trying to maintain their cleanliness. But if you bite into, I've had, have you ever had a tooth? I've had a few times mm. where they bite in, mo so disgusting, right? <laughs> they bite into somebody's tooth that somehow ended up in your food. Oh, no. Um, but but the, so the big thing is, 
one is it something that should have been there so the bone in the fish isn't going to get you anywhere the bone in the chicken even if it was supposed to be boneless you know that's it's a potential reasonable risk you know uh, that you can anticipate might be there but when it is a foreign substance that isn't supposed to be there the magic question then becomes okay maybe you, you felt sick you know for a day but did it really have any long-term lasting effect did it break your tooth then maybe there might be a claim there but people get really really upset at these foreign object and food cases was cases and they can be very very challenging because what are the damages other than your absolute disgust you know that it happened which can be significant um, but it, they can be difficult unless you do you know it does cause you some type of bodily harm and to piggyback on that food poisoning is a big one too um, but they're very difficult to prove whether you got food poisoning from a specific food or was it flu or was it a bug that you picked up. So it, it's hard to prove that. The way that you can do that is if it's from a local, not local, but a restaurant chain or a type of food at a grocery store. Try to Google to see if anyone else in the area has similar issues. If you can find other people that also have food poisoning, then you have a better chance of pursuing that claim. But those are typically very difficult to prove to narrow it down to exactly what caused it. Yeah, I would think that'd be next to impossible to prove. Well, make sure you keep said food or said thing, too, that you bit into and the remainder of the package. So if it was carrying salmonella or something, something that we can have tested to see. Yeah, because every once in a while you see on the news, you know, recalls. And uh, normally the stores are pretty quick to yank Get it off, off the shelf, it. right? Yeah, get it off the shelf. Right. But, I mean, that, that I would think would be... Uh, kind of interesting uh gosh we only got about three minutes left tell us a little bit about about the firm i mean you guys well. you guys are um your specialties and then of course you have other specialties uh within hoskins turcoloid and Lloyd. sure so um donna and i promote primarily do the personal injury so that's your slip and fall accidents your auto accidents um really any type of injury accident ron finero with our office does workers comp so if you have a workers comp claim give us a call ian lloyd and lou turco and rick is our new attorney they do social security disability and veterans disability and colin lloyd and justin lefko do bankruptcy and mortgage foreclosure defense yeah well that's uh well that's pretty versatile and you've got uh, four offices that folks can stop in Yep, we sure do. In Fort Pierce, Port St. Lucie, Okeechobee, and Vero Beach. Now, you're primarily in the Port St. Lucie office, which is, uh, what, right on Port St. Lucie Boulevard, yep, right? right at Port St. Lucie Boulevard in Gowan. So just a block off of US-1. And I am in the Fort Pierce office, which is a building down from the St. Lucie County Courthouse downtown, Fort Pierce. And the uh, main phone number there? 772-464-4600. Great. Good stuff. So we're on all the social media. So we're on Facebook. I believe we even have Twitter and Instagram. We do. And we have a, a, a <laughs> website as well. But our Facebook is pretty active. Um, our, our social media folks do a really good job. And they try to put up some interesting information. So if there is a recall, like you mentioned earlier, whether it be on a car or on a food. Um, and we also like to keep, as you know, we're very community service oriented. So we like to keep our, our friends uh, informed on things that are happening around town. All right. Uh, this is great. I, this is very, very informative. And folks, if you own a business, you have any questions, uh, feel free. I give you guys a call. That's a, and at least you can give them some tips on uh, what to do and uh, what not to do if, if you own a business. Uh, this is this is phenomenal. Uh, what about next week? What are we going to talk about so next, next week? So next week, I'm optimistic. I haven't fully secured our guests yet, but we're going to talk about, you know, it's July 2nd, and we've got fireworks and, and all the issues that come up with that, not necessarily from a liability. We're going to focus more on safety, how to be safe during the holiday uh, all week, whether it be we'll probably talk a little bit about the boating again. But really with fireworks, because it's unfortunate, even though they used to be, I remember when they were illegal, and if you set them off, folks were coming knocking, and now uh, they've already started in my neighborhood, Greg. I don't know about yours. Yeah, they yeah. have. Yes. So, yes, but, they but have. there's things that we can do to better protect ourselves, and so that we're safe, our pets are safe, because our poor pets, you know, that, that I know I have a little chihuahua that gets rather <laughs> anxious. So that's what we're hopefully going to talk about. That sounds great. Well, Taylor, Donna, thank you so much for being here. Very informative. And uh, seriously, if you have a business, give them a call. And they, 
tell you what you're doing right and wrong in your business. Treasure Coast Justice. Every Tuesday right here on WPSL Port St. Lucie. WPSL.com. Webcaster to the world on Alexa and Google Home.